On today's episode of Harvest Eating, we'll see how a small family business harvests delicious local Florida stone crabs. So stay tuned, because I promise we're going to make you hungry for crab meat. When I get into the kitchen a little later, I'll show you some delicious and simple ways to enjoy crab meat. First up, a fresh and delicious Latin-inspired crab meat cocktail similar to ceviche, loaded with Florida stone crab, avocado, tomatoes, cilantro, and plenty of fresh-squeezed citrus juice. Then, a simple brunch recipe, a crab meat and Gruyere cheese omelet with a chive drizzle. Simple yet delicious. And last, we'll take a fresh heirloom tomato and stuff it with lump crab meat, spinach, cheese, and then top it all off with panko breadcrumbs and bake it. But first, let's take a closer look at where this delicious crab meat comes from. Catching crabs is simple. The crabbers use big traps that are baited with fish, then drop to the bottom of the ocean. They wait a while, then pull up the traps and remove the stone crabs. Here in Crystal River, as the boats come off the Gulf of Mexico, they head up the rivers to the docks here at Charlie's. The crab claws are quickly offloaded in big crates by forklift, then taken to the cooking and chilling room. Stone crab claws are a dingy greenish color before being cooked, but after cooking, they become a beautiful reddish yellow color with black tips, and they look really nice. The claws are placed in a large hanging basket where they are first rinsed, then submerged into a steam kettle with boiling water for about 8 minutes. They are immediately placed in an ice water bath. This frigid water stops the cooking process and brings the claws down to about 35 degrees. Then they are shuttled into a sorting room where very well trained handlers grade the claws based on their size, small, medium, large, and jumbo. Once sorted, they go into a giant refrigerator where they are held at 32 degrees until they are shipped off to market or right across the harbor to Charlie's Restaurant where people can enjoy them only hours old. Florida stone crabs are the only crab or fish that I know of that can be eaten but does not give its life in the process. You see, these stone crabs are caught in traps, then the claws, if they're big enough, are gently pulled off. Now I'm sure to the crab this doesn't sound like much fun. However, they simply grow the claws back, and this is a heck of a lot better than most crabs which wind up completely eaten. In waterways along the east and west coast, catching crabs is not terribly difficult. I recently tossed a trap off the dock at a friend's house in Florida. Within a day, I had 12 large blue crabs that I could have eaten. I decided to grant these crabs clemency and toss them back into the water. Coming up next, we'll make a crab cocktail with Florida stone crab, avocado, and lots of other tasty ingredients. Tatler Reusable Canning Lids, family owned since 1976. That's right, Tatler Reusable Canning Lids. Yes, reusable with a lifetime guarantee. Made in America, BPA free. Tatler Reusable Canning Lids, because those who can, do. Get rid of the disposable lid. Go to reusablecanninglids.com. Tatler Reusable Canning Lids. Welcome back to Harvest Eating. Now let's get started on our stone crab cocktail. This is a fantastic dish. So before we get into our ceviche, let me first explain to you what ceviche is. This is a dish where seafood is cooked in the acid from citrus juice. And if you pour citrus juice over raw fish, 
and you leave it there long enough, the action of the acid, this has a very low pH, will cook the fish. Now, today's ceviche, we are using Florida fresh stone crab. And this is my stone crab. I got it from my good friends at Charlie's Stone Crab. But this crab is cooked. Whenever you get stone crabs, they have to be pre-cooked. So we do not need the acid to cook this, so let's call it like a faux ceviche. But it's the same technique, and you can use this, like I said, with any seafood. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is working with a mango. But there is a big pit in here that we need to get out. So uh, first of all, look for a good ripe one, and when they start to turn color like that, they tend to be um, pretty ripe. When you set it on your board and you just give it a little tip, it's gonna lay on its side. And if you do it the other direction, it's gonna wanna lay on its side. And whenever it lays on its side, it's showing you that the pit is horizontal. The pit's about this big, and we need to get it out, so let's do that. So what we're gonna do is just take a paring knife and carefully remove the flesh of the mango here. All right, we're gonna cut this mango up into little chunks like this, and then get it over here into our work bowl, and then take a second to clean up. Now we wanna cut up a Roma tomato into a little dice. Now this is gonna go into our work bowl. The next thing we need to do is break down the avocado. The first step is to lay the avocado on the cutting board. Then take your sharp chef's knife and slice into the avocado until you feel the knife hit the pit. Then carefully turn the avocado while trying to keep the knife stationary. Once completely cut around, separate the two halves, then stick your knife into the pit and carefully remove it from your knife by pinching it off. Next take a large spoon and scoop out the avocado meat from each half. If you're careful, they should come out as one piece. And there you have it. So it's completely out. Now let's flip it over. Now we're gonna dice it up. Okay, now that our avocado is done, we don't wanna add it to our work bowl yet because it's gonna get bashed up. So let's just slide our knife under and just move it off to the side. Now what I wanna do is cut up some fresh cilantro. And this is the perfect herb for ceviche. It's that wonderful, beachy, summery flavor and smell. Okay, now we want to get this into our work bowl. And we're going to start assembling some of our seasonings now. So the first thing we want to do is get some kosher salt down in here. We're going to add some black pepper. And then right here I've got a little bit of minced red onion. And you don't need a lot, just a little bit of minced red onion. Okay, now let's get the star ingredient in here our fresh stone crab. And this is gorgeous meat. You can see it's got some nice brown color. And there's big chunks. We wanna just get this right into the bowl. May not need all of it, but mm, look at this. All right, so now let's put this down. We need to add a few more ingredients. Right here I've got a tomatillo and olive salsa. And this is really great. You can get this recipe over at the website. We're gonna add a little of this in there and it's gonna bring a really nice Latin flavor because olives are very Latin, Spanish and Mexican. So we'll just actually use this whole bit here. And now let's get our lime juice. And this is lime juice freshly squeezed with lemon. So I've got two in there. You could use orange juice, there's lots of different juices, but mainly lime with some lemon. Let's pour this over. You really can't have too much of this. This is a wonderful flavor. And now we're gonna start to mix this up carefully. Remember, there's things in there we don't wanna break up, so carefully mix it. And one thing to note, this crab meat was very carefully picked over. Now, if you can't get stone crab meat, you can certainly use jumbo lump, but just check it. Make sure that there's no shells in there. Now let's get some of our beautiful avocado. We're probably gonna put about half of a half in there. And let's drop that right in. And then we're just gonna be careful and mix that right through. Now it's time to plate this up. And we're just gonna get our salad right down in there. And you want there to be plenty of, of the citrus juice. Now I wanna add some tortillas. And 
Of course, you could use store-bought tortillas, but what I like to do is kind of go halfway. What you can do is get some corn tortillas at the store, the little six inch round corn tortillas, and then what you need to do is just cut them in half, cut them in half again, and put them down in hot oil, and you fry them up crisp like this, and then you salt them. Immediately when they come out, salt them with some good kosher salt, and here you have amazing chips that are as good as homemade, and you only took one shortcut. So we're gonna take these and just put them right around, just like that. Last step, take some of your fresh cilantro, just put a little bit right on the top, and there you have an incredible fresh Florida stone crab ceviche. This is awesome, I hope you give it a try today. Coming up next, we'll make a crab meat and cheese omelet. Welcome back to Harvest Eating. Now let's get started making our jumbo lump crab, spinach, and cheese omelet. The first thing we're gonna do is make our creme fraiche and chive drizzle. So let's start by chopping up some fresh chives. Okay, now we're gonna get these right down in our little work bowl here. And now we're gonna talk about two more ingredients. Right here is some creme fraiche. This is cultured cream, beautiful stuff. There is a video and a recipe at harvesteating.com. So we'll take this, this goes right into our little work bowl. And then we've got a little bit of organic half and half and that's gonna act to make this a drizzle. Right now it wouldn't drizzle because it's too thick. So we'll just pour this right in. And you watch your consistency. You don't want soup, you just want it to be drizzly. Now we're gonna season it up with a little bit of salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. All right, our drizzle is done. Let's set this off to the side. And now we wanna get our eggs all whisked up. We've got four here today. We're gonna crack them. Hopefully get most of it in the bowl. Now we wanna start whisking this up, but first we're gonna add a little bit of salt and some pepper. And now just get right into it and start whisking. So we'll lose our whisk right here. Now, what we wanna do is turn the heat onto our pan. Got a good omelet pan here. And what we're gonna do is take some butter and drop this right onto the pan. And let me talk for a minute about the asparagus that we're using. Here are the asparagus, and you can see that they have a very brilliant green color. These were just, the tips were cut off, they were thrown into some boiling salted water. That's called blanching. And they blanched in that water for two to three minutes, and then they were put into an ice bath. That's called shocking, and that is what gives you that amazing deep dark green color. They didn't have color like this when we started. And the crab here is what's called jumbo lump crab. This comes from Maryland and this is picked out by hand so it's not cheap but it is delicious and the combination of the eggs and the asparagus and crab and a little bit of really nice Wisconsin Parmesan cheese is going to make a wonderful omelet. So back over here on our pan the butter is starting to melt. And that is a good thing. So let's get our eggs right down. And now we want to move them around. And the idea is to get these eggs set in the pan before we start putting the rest of our ingredients in. And just move them around. A good stainless steel pan like this is not going to hopefully stick on you. So once it sets pretty well like this, try to loosen it up a little bit. Now we want to add, first of all, our lump crab. And this is gorgeous stuff, very luxurious. This is real special occasion food. And try to keep it in one sort of line because we're gonna fold the eggs right on top of the crab. Just like that. And now some of our super green spring asparagus and our Parmesan cheese goes right in there. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my plate and start to fold this omelet over. What you can do is just grab this pan and lift it right up. And if you're lucky, your omelet is gonna wanna roll nice. 
just like that. Now let's take it and transfer it right to our plate, just like this. Kind of help it roll out. And the last step is to take our little drizzle here. Remember the creme fraiche and chives. Put some of this right on and a little bit around the plate. And that is it. There is a delicious jumbo lump crab with asparagus and Parmesan cheese omelet. Give that one a try. Stay tuned. After this short break, I'll show you a simple crab meat and cheese stuffed tomato. Welcome back to Harvest Eating. Now let's get started making our lump crab spinach and cheese stuffed tomato. The first thing we need to do to start our stuffed tomato is to first talk about the spinach. And this is a previously frozen spinach. But the most important thing to note about this has been very carefully squeezed out. This stuff's got a lot of water in it. So you need to really squeeze it out. You can do it by hand over a bowl or something or you can use like a clean kitchen towel and wring it out. But I promise you, if you skip this step and you use waterlogged spinach in here, it's going to be a big mess. Now, let's make the stuffing. First ingredient we're going to put down is some Greek yogurt. Get that right down in there. This is going to give a little level of moisture. Next is going to be good mayonnaise. And now some fresh cracked black pepper. A little bit of salt. This is kosher salt. And then the last ingredient in the stuffing is going to be a good quality mustard. And I like a Dijon style mustard. About maybe a teaspoon of mustard. And now we need to mix this up. Okay, that's the mixture. And you'll notice I didn't add the crab in the beginning. Uh, this is our crab here, and this is a lump crab. So we don't want to put it in there and mash it all up. We want to try to preserve those lumps. So let's add it in now. We're going to add all of this in there. Quite luxurious. So now we want to fold it. Again, trying to preserve as much lumps as we can possibly get. Now, filling done. Let's set that off to the side. And let's talk about what we're going to stuff the filling into. This is an heirloom tomato. It's very ripe, but we want to get um, some room in here to put the stuffing. So it's very simple. Just take a paring knife. Just want to remove the top. Now we want to take a, a spoon like this. This is a grapefruit spoon because inside here is a lot of membrane, a lot of seeds, and again, very liquidy stuff that we want to get out of there because we want to replace it with that wonderful crab stuffing. And try not to break the wall of the tomato because then it'll fall apart. And there you see the tomato is well carved out. There's plenty of room for our stuffing. Okay, now that that's emptied out, we're going to take this and put it in our pan. And this is just a little, uh, you know, thing that can go in the oven, a little roasting dish. And what I've done is I covered it up with foil because this can get a little messy. And I also put just a little bit of olive oil on top. So just take your tomato and push it down like that. Now, before we stuff it, we want to season the cavity because hopefully we're going to eat the whole entire tomato. So you want to add some seasoning. So we'll do that with salt and pepper. Okay. Now it's time to make some room and get the stuffing inside the tomato. And here you can see nice big lumps. So now that we're at this point, we have two more ingredients to put on the tomato. This is some uh, very sharp Vermont cheddar cheese. And I love cheese from Vermont. If you can find a local cheese near you, use that. We're going to put this right on the top. And then we have um, what are called panko breadcrumbs. These are a, a Japanese style of breadcrumb. Uh, when you see a dish like tempura, they would use panko breadcrumbs. If you don't have panko, you can use regular, but this just gives it a nice little crust. So just put some right on top. And then take a little bit of olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. We'll drizzle some of this on top. All right, now this is ready to go into the oven. It's been preheated at 350 degrees. Put it in there. I'd say this is going to take probably 35 minutes, but you need to be careful because the tomato with the salt in there and all these ingredients, when it starts to cook, if you leave it in there too long, it's going to fall apart. You want to serve it kind of standing up like this. So in the oven it goes. Okay, success. 
Well, there you have a beautiful crab meat and spinach stuffed tomato. And I really hope you enjoyed today's crab recipes. And I want to encourage you to seek out crab. Here in the United States, we've got crab just about everywhere. All up and down the East Coast, you've got blue crabs. Of course, in Florida here, you've got the wonderful stone crab. Out West, you've got Dungeness crabs. So crabs are everywhere. They're fun to cook with, and they taste great. If you want to get your hands on these recipes, visit HarvestEating.com. And I look forward to seeing you again next week right here on Harvest Eating.